I recently picked up this uh, Game Gear, Sega Game Gear Portable Game System. Uh, not working uh, from the seller, but no actual information as to why it was not working. Um, it actually came with the original box uh, in pretty decent condition, actually. Just got the uh, original manual in there, and it's just got a couple of little slight tears, but I'll, I'll be able to uh, repair that later. But uh, yeah, I've also got some Game Gear games here. So we've got uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, we've got Leaderboard Golf, Terminator 2, and Star Wars in some extra cases as well. So one thing that I have found though is uh, so we've got our uh, we've got uh, 9 volts, 3 watts coming in through our supply here, and it will turn on. It gives us a Nice LED, but there's no game on obviously. obviously. So let's uh, pop a game in, flick it on, and we still get nothing. And even playing around with the, uh, the dial there on the side, you can kind of see some lines and some stuff, you know, fiddling around with the volume, not getting anything either. And you can kind of see at the top there, like, stuff is happening. You can see the game is actually running in the background, but the uh, there's just no sound and no actual video. So this is a pretty common uh, issue with these game gears. The uh, electrolytic capacitors in these were they were, they were known to fail. Um, it's a pretty pretty known fault. So what we'll do is pop this apart and then let's have a look. See what we need. So it's the back off. It looks like we're able to actually pull out these boards individually as well. So we might start with the back board and then we'll see if we can pull the uh, front board out of here without damaging this screen. Okay, so let's get this power. Sorry, this is the soundboard out. Hmm. All in all, I must say this, the condition of this Game Gear, for not being a working and how cheaply I got it with the box, it's in tremendous condition. Ah, uh, yeah, so you can see on the bottom here, uh, we definitely have some leaked electrolytic uh, fluid. You can see how scungy that is on the bottom there. So one or more of these caps has definitely sprung a leak. And uh, yeah, you can see this one right here. You can see all the, all the, these, so these, you can see these solder joints on the side here are nice and shiny. That's what solder should look like. And these ones have been eroded by the, uh, by the gunk that's come out of the electrolyte that's come out of that, uh, that capacitor right there. So the one sprung a leak and yeah, damaged this whole area. So we'll have to take that off ASAP and clean up this whole board. But let's continue with the teardown for now. <clears throat> So that's the back case. It's actually pretty clean. It looks like that electrolytic fluid didn't actually leak down onto the uh, the case there. So let's just pop that aside for now and check this one out. Um, this board actually looks like it's in pretty good health. There's nothing really on there. I mean, we'll replace these caps anyway, but uh, just due to, due to their age. But what do we got? So it's a it's Suka brand, uh, 820 microfarad, 6.3 volts, and a 100 nanofarad, oh, 100 microfarad, sorry, 25 volt, and I oh, can't even see that one, what is that? It's like a 22 microfarad, 22 microfarad, 35 volt. So let's get some of those out.
Yeah, you can see on the board there underneath that capacitor just how mounted it is there as well. So that one's actually leaked also. So let's tidy that up, shall we? Just use a makeup. Um, what are these things called? Q tip. Q bud. And some nice purple alcohol. That's it. Don't you just hate when that happens? You have a component, you're ready to put it on the board, and then you put it down somewhere when you go to grab something else, and now you can't see it anymore. So that's the 2.2. There it is, hiding from me. And there's our 63 volt. Okay. That is our power board repaired with all new capacitors. Mostly matching. Like I said, you don't want to, you want to match the, the uh, capacitance and uh, not go under on the voltage at least for matching capacitors. So it's usually, especially in power, I mean it's not exactly the end of the world if you go over. All right, let's pop that off to the side and focus on the soundboard. So like I said, this one needs some cleaning up. So let's get our ice purple out. Let's give that, we'll pop this off to the side for now. And let's give that a quick spray. And just wipe it up. So we are looking at this one particularly. So let's read the markings on there. They are 100, 100, 100. So we've got three 100 nanofarad 6.3 volts. You can see that star, 100, 6.3. We've got one, two, three of them. And then we have some 47, four volts. And this one is, if you focus, another 47, four volts, okay. A pair of players. Let's see what we can do. So I don't want to rip the pads off. It's the tricky part. Oh yeah, that smells bad old, leaky gunk. So the unfortunate part here is because we have gone from uh, surface mount and we're going to be replacing them with these. So there's a hundred microfarad 6.3 volts. Uh, we're gonna have to get creative with our mounting solutions. So. We should just be able to pretty much bend the leads up like that and place it in the middle and then solder them really gently on much like a surface mount. See? Like that. But it will require, maybe if we bend them out up a little bit so that we can get our... So so we can get a little little bit of height, but not too much. And then we can probably 
Let's pre-trim these leads. And that way we will have a capacitor that we can kind of mount like that and solder in place. I don't know if you can see that there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's, that sounds like a good plan. Let's see if we can get these other caps off. Let's just try and break these off very gently for starters. They all seem like they're pretty. Yeah, they're just pulling straight off the board. These are not in good health, these capacitors. Pop that out and I'll give you a proper view. So yeah, you can see how disgusting it is under there. It's all gunky. I'm gonna take these caps off and give the whole board a proper bath. Now what we're gonna do is grab our nice soft toothbrush. Give that a good real soaking. Let's grab our iron. So it looks like, thankfully, just cleaning up, just scratching those solder pads with the tip of my iron, and it looks like they are all in relatively good health. I think this one could possibly do. Let's put it upside down here. This one's probably in the worst condition. You can see on the end there. It's not great but all of the other ones are in top shape. So that's the best possible outcome we could have expected. So let's get installing. Actually, before we do that, what I might do, uh, one thing I noted earlier was that the wires on this coil here were a bit craptastic, so what I'll do is I'll just reflow those as well. these pads up a bit more. Can't get my fat fingers down there, so let's... Alrighty. One more done. So that's, that's this board cleaned up. And capacitors placed on board there. I should be able to bend those relatively straight up. Just tidy up a bit of excess. So what do we have on that one? Very good. Okay, so that's two. Well, let's have a look at the rest of it, shall we? Let's actually tidy up my bench a bit. It's got a lot of flux residue on there that's sticky. It's 
seems on my fingers. Hmm. Good enough for the COVIDs, good enough for flux. Looks like it should be fairly easy to take this out. thing you might notice that I'm doing up here with the, the lid of my iFixit kit is that I'm, as I'm removing screws, I'm placing them where they came out, like a map, um, so that when they go back in, all I have to do is match where they are roughly on the board to where they are roughly in my little screw tray. That allows me to just plug them back in no walkers. And if you weren't aware, I got the idea from uh, the Tomb Raider movie, actually. <laughs> uh, so we got some more here. The uh, the tech guy in that I can't remember his the character's name, but uh, as he was pulling apart some item, he explained the same thing to Lara Croft. So there you go. I thought, damn, that's a good idea. Why don't I do that? And sure enough, it turned out to be a terrific idea. And this served me quite well. Alrighty. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and we're off. So. Screen actually looks like it's pretty well held in place. Oh, what did we just drop? Nothing. Felt like a bit of. Hmm. Did you see what I dropped? Ah, that's what we dropped. That's a pad for one of the keys. Cool. Okay. Just checking the other one that's there. Yep. Okay, cool. So let's move that out of the way. And we've got the board here. So just double checking on this side of the board that there's no... There's a small... No, that's a ceramic. A bit gummy up here, actually. It looks like this is all disgusting. So this cap has definitely lost its crap. These caps are this one here. So. You can see there, that one right there, has, uh, there's a bit of corrosion right on the edge there. So that's lost its, lost its guts as well. That one's not too terrific. These ones look okay. But on the back of the board here, underneath the volume control, you can see that there's a lot of damage. A lot of junk, so that's probably this cap has lost its, has lost its guts entirely. Let's check on the other side. It all looks generally fine. And there's no real no real schmutz on this side, so I think we're good. I mean we'll have to replace them all, but I don't think we're going to have an issue with uh, any of them in particular. What I might do just to protect this screen. Eh, let's put down I typically use these, these are makeup pads. I typically use them for uh, wiping large surfaces, but that's actually going to be pretty good as a, just a pad. So I'm just going to tape that on the back of this board, just using some captain tape. And that will just stop me from scratching stop me from scratching the board and actually hold it in place quite nicely too. Hmm. Two birds with one stone. 
Hmm, how to do this? I think I want to tackle this one first, because that looks like it's going to be an absolute pain. This big one on the end here, it looks like it's actually glued down as well. Let's try and... Hmm... Yeah, there we go. Oops. Okay, we made ourselves some space there. Alright, what we're going to do... Move all these to the side. That's for you. Let's get in there. Pliers and a very clean, very clean solder tip. Try not to melt anything. Oh, yeah, you can smell that burning electrolyte. Oh, that stinks so bad. Oh, that's disgusting. That is not a pleasant smell, I can assure you. Okay, looks like that's actually coming loose now, so... Just be able to, yeah, pry that off the board. Great, okay. Let's see if we can clean those contacts up. This, oops, sorry, down in this corner here. Alright, we still have pads. That's excellent. Let's see there, that we've still got something to solder to. Terrific. Okay, let's take off the other one, which was this one here, so that's the other hundred. It's also stuck down. Yeah. Ooh, that one came off way too easily. Yeah, that's that is some gunked up gunked up pads right there. taking the pads off with it but what we can do is we can scrape that back a bit so let's um let's just apply a little bit of flux to start with try and hit it with the tip of the iron again and scrape it back so we want just the tip right there Corrosion. That's what we need to get rid of. What we're gonna do? We need more, a lot more flux. So let's get it. Let's bring out the big stuff again. This is where I wish I had a syringe of this stuff. Actually, I ordered a syringe of flux from this Rossman's Rossman Group channel stall, but uh, then the world went into lockdown and it's waiting somewhere between uh, his shipping location and Australia. And there's just not much I can do about that. Alright, there we 
there. Much nicer. So you can see I've scraped back the corrosion off one of those pads. And we can do it to the other side. Let's I have to do it this way because I'm starting to burn the plastic there. didn't take out the pads, they were just absolutely caked with corrosion. Excellent. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take all of the capacitors off and then uh, put new ones on. I'll probably take them off, give the board a good clean because obviously there's heaps of corrosion on where all these pads have been. Uh, where all these capacitors are coming from um, and then uh, we'll pop them all back on. So what I've got here is uh, an actual, I've got a map of each of these capacitors. Uh, the, the lovely team, sorry, the lovely team at Console 5 have uh, put together the capacitor map for this board in particular, um, which is the VA1 Twin A6. So this is the 8377996 board. Um, so I'm able to actually use their list of capacitors, which I've double checked and has actually lined up to what I've got here, um, to where the caps actually go. So if you're looking at that, I'll try and overlay the, let me that out of the way. I'll try and overlay the picture. Um, and that's kind of where they all go on the board here. Um, so I can take these all off and then put them all back on whenever and after I've done cleaning up all the corrosion. Okay, so we are, hopefully you just watched me uh, repair, remove all these capacitors, cleaned up the pads uh, with a bunch of flux, and then cleaned down uh, out the board with my toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol, and we've got nice 
solderable pads now. And yeah, let's just begin putting components back on. So I think we'll just go that way. So let's start on the side here. So this one is Capacitor C6, which is a 10 microfarad 6.3. So that was one of the small ones we had. This is 22. One of these ones, 10, 6.3. Great. Now, this is the tricky part. So we've got positive is on that side. So we need to figure out how we can mount those capacitors. Again, I'm using uh, through hole components in place of surface mount, which shouldn't make much of a difference. I think I might do it. Fold these leads this way really sharply. Okay, well, let's try and do it that way. So I'm gonna have to hold on with my pliers to get my fingies out of the way. All right, that's much nicer. So now, now we've got that. So it's upright. So you can see what we can do is we can just bend it over like that. And that's kind of actually how the surface mount components were actually on board already. So I may do this one in the same manner because it seems to be a much nicer install. And then bend it over. Yeah, that's a much nicer mounting method. All right. I really like that, and it sits in nice and flush in the original footprint, as you can see there. Yeah, okay. Okay, so those are our capacitor bolts. So we've got all of these in there nicely. I had to, these ones are significantly taller than the uh, surface mount ones that they've replaced. So I've had to uh, just kind of finagle them around. I'm trying to miss these pads because they are the backside of the, uh, uh, the buttons on the front. Ooh, these ones in here and these two over here again trying to dodge the backside of the uh, D-pad connector and then that one I burnt the, uh, the plastic here a little unfortunately because it was just it was nigh on impossible trying to get my soldering tip right into the uh, edge there to get that pin but uh, yeah that's that's all of them done now I'm just going to give it another quick hit to remove all the solder flux with my toothbrush here. Not strictly necessary, but I like to keep it clean. Alrighty. I'll just air dry that. <laughs> Let's get it tested. Much nicer. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. We got power. We got a screen. Obviously nothing because we have no game. So let's pop a game in. So Hedgehog Two. Oh 
Oh yeah, look at that. Run this a bit. If you didn't say that. There we go. Sound. Got graphics. Yeah, this screen is just terrible to record. I like the hedgehog too. Underground zone. Beautiful. I would call that quite a successful fix. So now, all I've got to do is just pop all the screws back in, give it a bit of a wipe down to get rid of all the grubby crap off my fingers that I've smeared all over the buttons and the screens, and I've got a working cam here. Too easy. Now, I sourced all of these components myself, just because that's the kind of guy that I am, um, but the, co the company that I've used, I mentioned them earlier, Console 5, uh, they've got an amazing wiki for uh, doing all sorts of console repairs and whatnot, but they also have a shop where they sell capacitor replacement kits specifically for most units. Um, so they've got, uh, got console repair kits for the Sega Game Gear, like this one. Um, they've got console uh, cap replacement kits for Mega Drives, uh, Master Systems, SNESs, Commodore 64s, pretty much any any old retro era console that has capacitors, which is pretty much all of them, will at some point have the electrolytics inside them fail because, well, yeah, they, they fail over time. They get old, they leak their juice, and as you saw, nothing works. But, uh, If oh, it's gone upside down. If uh, the world wasn't in lockdown right now, I probably would have just ordered the parts from them. But as you can see, I have quite a lot of capacitors as is, so I have no problem with stocking more. Plus, I pretty frequently repair things like this, so just having a whole bunch of capacitors was is pretty good for me. But like I said, if you have a Game Gear or another console, I thoroughly recommend that you check out console5.com. Uh, check out their wiki, check out their store, they sell some great, great stuff for uh, console repairers. Uh, but anyway, that's all I have. Working Sega Game Gear. Thanks for watching. <laughs>